Shohei Otani can do it all. Shohei Otani can homer. He can hit for average. He can hit for power. He can steal bases. But what the Dodgers need to do right now is they need Shohei Otani to pitch. You are locked on MLB, your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. Today's episode of Locked On MLB is brought to you by our good friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter or whatever it's called now. And I am your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. For the next couple of weeks, I will be the host not only of Locked On MLB but until the end of the regular season, also the host of Locked On A's. And I'm going to be doing a special episode where I'm going to be at the last game of the year at the Oakland Coliseum. Now, does that mean it's the last ever Oakland A's game? Uh, These days, I don't know, because Sacramento looks like it could be a disaster. Uh, Check out Locked on A's. I talked a little bit about some, there have been some announcements and some news coming out of Las Vegas, but still, uh, there's still not a lot of concrete things going on. And, and, uh, let me just say it's, it's a touch confusing. Hey, let's talk about the trivia question. I pay tribute to the great Joe Castiglione, who is walking away, retiring after a fabulous career. Uh, Return of the Jedi was the big movie when he started announcing Red Sox games. It's been a while. It's been a proverbial minute since that ha- since uh, Castiglione was not announcing a Red Sox game. And so he was worth a, worth a salute. And I said... When he came in, his partner was Ken Coleman, another legendary Red Sox announcer. I think a little overrated, but what the hell do I know? Uh, When Ken Coleman left, Castiglione did not become the lead voice. Who was the sportscaster who replaced Ken Coleman and to be the second person paired with Joe Castiglione? I got a bunch of people saying Jerry Remy and Sean McDonough, but Argonaut Comedy got it right. And uh, our guy comedy is a everyday Sully. The answer is Bob Starr. Bob Starr, a, a journeyman who bounced around. He uh, he he announced a lot of Cardinal games in the seventies. He announced Angel games in the eighties, and he announced Red Sox games in the late eighties, early nineties. And then eventually Castiglione was paired. Uh, well, he, he had many different uh, partners in the booth, but Joe Castiglione was with Bob Starr. So there you go. And did I mention, there you go. Well, uh, another day, another big game for Shohei Otani. Um, The Dodgers are tuning up. They're going to win the the West. They're at 89 wins. They're going to win the few teams who win uh, 80 games. Um, Shohei Otani hit home run number 48. So he needs two home runs to reach the 50 home run mark. Mookie Betts, Batted right behind him. Betts uh, double, uh, no, singled and tripled. Uh, Max Muncy, uh, he tripled and uh, he drove in five runs. Uh, Rojas uh, drove in a run. Uh, uh, Teoscar Hernandez dusted himself off and he got two hits. Uh, and Freddie Freeman got on base twice and scored both times. And the Dodgers' offense is just clicking. On all cylinders, the other day, their offense scored nine runs and blew the doors off the dump against Atlanta. And today, they went to Miami and scored nine runs, and everything is great. Except they lost. The Dodgers went to Miami and played one of the worst teams in baseball, and their pitching was grotesque. Now, Bobby Miller, young Bobby Miller, who has to be one of the hopes for the Dodgers moving forward. If they're going to have, if they're going to have, uh, you know, any hope to go, to go deep in this year's postseason. And Miller had a really solid year last year. His ERA right now starts with an eight. He allowed four runs in two innings. His ERA starts with an eight. And then in came Michael Grove, 
they might as well have dug up the body of Lefty Grove. He let up three runs in an inning and two thirds. Hey, let's bring in another former Red Sox in Ryan Brazier. How about him? Well, why doesn't he just let up two runs in a single inning? And then Daniel Hudson. He's got World Series uh, pedigree. Well, guess what? He let up a couple runs as well. The Dodgers pitching is an absolute mess right now. Now, they got four decent innings from Yamamoto the other day. Walker Bueller pitched okay the other day, and they seem to be getting some good pitching out of Flaherty. But holy cats, folks. Uh, this Remember, this is the Dodger team that everyone was saying it wasn't fair. They're so stacked it wasn't fair. It's just like we need a salary cap because there's teams like the Dodgers who just ruin everything by buying championships, blah, 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 blah. If there's any team that looks like it's going to win 90-something game and be three and out in the division series, it's the L.A. Dodgers. And before anybody goes on this show and starts saying, oh, why are you so anti-Dodger? Let me tell you something here. I'm not a Dodger fan. I'm not. Uh, and if I said I was, my late father, who's the biggest giant fan on the planet Earth, would come down from heaven and have a word with me. But I am currently in Los Angeles County. I have a job other than this podcast and the Lockdown A's podcast, and that is I teach. I teach in the city of Pasadena. And the further the Dodgers go in the postseason, the better it is for me to have baseball conversations with people. Because baseball is a local team sport. When the local team is doing well, everybody's excited. When the local team's out of it, everyone's watching football. I've witnessed this in New York, in Boston. Well, not so much Boston was there because they're Red Sox crazy. And when I lived there, the Patriots stunk. But I've seen that in the Bay Area. I've seen that here in L.A. I've seen that everywhere I go. And so the longer the Dodgers play in this postseason, the better it is for me and having idle conversation. So if Philadelphia goes far, or San Diego or Arizona or the Mets or whomever, and they go to the World Series and I want to say, hey, did you see the World Series yesterday? Nobody in my school is going to care. So if to, for me to have cool conversation about baseball, it behooves me to see the Dodgers go far. But I've mentioned this before. Kershaw, out. James Paxton, how much do they want James Paxton now? Not that he's doing great, but uh, Gavin Stone, hurt. Glasnow, out for the year. Yamamoto, they're treating with kid gloves. Bobby Miller, terrible. Walker Bueller, pitched well the other day, but are, are you really going to say a rotation led by Walker Mueller? Walker Bueller is going to go to the World Series? Landon Knack got smacked around the other day. Jack Flaherty has been pitching very well, but he got roughed up the other day. I mean, we're going to have to, you know, it's night hyperbole to say, um, can Otani open? I mean, I was looking at Brewster Gratterall, a leftover from the 2000 World Series, who's pitched five more games than me this year and has five starts in his career. Uh, you know, Gratterall is good last year. I'm thinking, like, uh, can, can he go? I mean, the Dodgers are making the playoffs. And they'll probably have the bye unless they go on a slump and Milwaukee passes them, which is within the realm of possibility. Milwaukee's playing Philadelphia, so one of those teams are going to lose. It's That helps the Dodgers try to get closer to uh, earning a bye. Well, let's see who. I mean, I'm going to go to the. I'm going to go to the standings right now. The standings right now. The the L.A. Dodgers. Oops, I, I just opened the wrong thing. So the Dodge as it is right now, the Dodgers and the Phillies would be the two teams that would be getting uh, the buy, even though uh, the Brewers are are breathing right down their tail. Okay, now. If that should happen, okay, I got because this is this is up to the second uh uh wild card stands. I want to make sure I'm I'm saying it correct. So the Dodgers are right now uh uh two games back of the Phillies. So let's say that they will get the winner of the Brewers versus the Mets. Right now, the Brewers and the Mets 
would play each other. San Diego and Arizona would play each other. The Dodgers would play the one of those two teams. Do you know what those two teams have? Good pitching depth. They have very good pitching depth. Their starting pitching is very good. Their bullpen is pretty good, too, on each case. The Brewers has depth up and down. And the Mets, like Jose Quintana, is suddenly pitching like he's he's Juan Marisha. You're not going to be able to slug nine runs against that pitching staff, no matter how great Freddie Freeman is, no matter how great Shohei Otani is. They are going to be facing a good, solid starting pitcher every single game. And I can't tell you if Milwaukee or New York would. As it stands right now, if if this is the way the seed is going to be, and Los Angeles is going to play either Milwaukee or New York, I got to be honest with you. Um, I don't pick LA against either one of them. And if the Brewers pass the Dodgers, as it's listed right now, LA would be playing the Mets. I'd pick the Mets a thousand times a week over the Dodgers as they're currently constituted. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about how happy Met fans are by the results of today. But the Dodgers have to figure out something fast. They're making the postseason. But the whole, hey, if they don't win the World Series, this, se- this season's a failure. Um, They may not make it out of the first round. And I'm not saying I'm rooting for that. But we all see that if they don't have the pitching to do that, this is going to be an extraordinarily short October for a team that has gone all in in a way that we've never seen before. You've heard us talk about FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every single regular season afternoon, Sunday afternoon, out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. Just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book. Now let's talk to our friends over at Game Time. You've heard us talk about Game Time. Game Time is where you need to go for tickets, and I'm using Game Time like crazy. I'm going to two games next week. One at Dodger Stadium, but one at the Oakland Coliseum. That's right. I'm bouncing all over California. Game Time is a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live event even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff, so you only get incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Game Time Picks have the curation makes it easy to save more on sports, concert, comedy, theater, etc. You get seat views, as panoramic view from seat, in the app before you buy, and you get the lowest price guarantee, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. All right. Here's a question to ask. Is it better to have momentum going into the postseason or is it better to have a team that can say, all right, we made it and be relieved and turn it back on? The fact of the matter is, is I've been watching baseball for a long time. And I can honestly say without doing the math or the details is that the narrative of whether or not it's good to have momentum into the playoffs or not is always written in retrospect. There have been instances where teams have been red hot heading into the postseason and ride that all the way to the World Series. Has there ever been another story quite like the 2007 Rockies who suddenly couldn't lose a game and stampeded into the World Series before hitting the brick wall that was the Red Sox? In fact, there are some people who have the mentality that because they swept the way through the division series and through the NLCS, and they had that time off while the Red Sox played seven games. There are some people who think that that time off hurt them and stopped their momentum. And all of a sudden, 
they should have, it would have been better off if they played game seven, blah, 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 blah. All that's written in retrospect. All that's written in retrospect. Take a look at the year before that. You could not be any colder heading into the postseason than the 2006 Detroit Tigers, who couldn't buy a win down the stretch and allowed the Minnesota Twins to pass them on the last day of the season, no less, and go on to see the Twins be the division champs and the Tigers be the wildcard team and be sentenced to facing a superior Yankee team in the division series. Except the Tigers then turned it on. And they beat the Yankees and they beat Oakland. And next thing you know, they're in the World Series. You could not be less on fire than the 2000 New York Yankees who stumbled into the postseason looking like they were just tired and gassed and went on to win the World Series in five. And sometimes you see teams that are super red hot. Do you remember how the San Diego Padres finished the 1996 season? absolutely torching the Dodgers and leapfrogging them to win the division title? Of course you don't, because they got swept by St. Louis in the division series. You probably have zero memory of that. You probably have zero memory of how intense the Oakland A's played in 2012, only to be absolutely forearm shivered by the Detroit Tigers in the playoffs. This is always about, the, the narrative is always written in retrospect, which brings us to the American League East. Now, at the beginning of the year, I picked the Baltimore Orioles to win the division. But I said, realistically, any team but the Red Sox could win the division. I didn't know how bad the Blue Jays were going to be. And actually, the Red Sox were better than I thought they'd be. As it turned out, the Yankees are getting red hot at the exact right time. They're hitting. Juan Soto got another home run. Aaron Judge is hitting the home runs at will. And they're figuring out by removing Clay Holmes from the closer role, they could be more creative. You saw Nestor Cortez pitch the final, what was it, four and two-thirds innings the other day, and instead of bringing a reliever to close the game, they just let Cortez do it. They have Luke Weaver closing some games, and today with Marcus Stroman, probably the odd man out of what is a pretty strong rotation, they had him pitch the final in a absolute blowout of Seattle, and he got a save out of the for his troubles. The Yankees are clicking. And with all the talk, and believe me, I was one of them about how Cashman, bad Cashman is doing this and how bad Boone is doing that. Here we are with about, you know, was it about 11 games left? And the Yankees have the best record in the American League. Thank you very much. A game ahead of Cleveland and have opened up a four game lead over Baltimore. They have all but clinched it. And Baltimore is absolutely falling like a rock. They've dropped seven of their last 10 games. And they've dropped their last two, and they have looked bad. Today, Blake Snell, who is now licking his chops at a potential another run at a, at a free agency, and the Giants, led by Mike Yastrzemski, Yastrzemski homered, my mom likes to call him Mikey, and the Giants beat the Orioles 10-0. 10-0. If the Orioles didn't show up to Camden Yards, it would have been a forfeit, and they would have lost 9-0. So the Giants beat the Orioles worse than if they didn't show up. The Orioles look dead from the neck up right now. Their pitching has been atrocious. Their bats have gone dead. And they're losing tons of games. And yet, they could turn it on like no one's business if they just happen to have one good week in October. Remember how bad the Diamondbacks and the Rangers were in September last year? The Diamondbacks were dreadful as finishing the season. And the Rangers had a, a, a beginning, the end of, end of August and beginning of September so bad that I actually had a podcast episode whose title was Texas Foldham. And yet those two teams made it to the World Series. So is the Yankees finally, the Yankees piecing everything together Will that be the great momentum that shoots them all the way to the World Series for the first time since 2009? Or will they fall flat on their face like the Minnesota Twins did in 2006 while the Orioles say, well, we made it, New, you know, turn the page. 
There are other teams, by the way, the Detroit Tigers can't seem to lose, and they won an absolute thriller in extra innings against the Kansas City Royals, and they are knock, knock, knocking. Now, the fact that the Twins beat the Guardians is the only reason why the Tigers are not half a game out of a wild card spot with only about 10 games to play. I will say that the Yankees, who torched the Seattle Mariners, basically ended the Mariners season. The the uh, Houston Astros had a come from behind win game against the San Diego Padres, and that mixed with the Mariners' loss has given the Astros a five game lead. A five game lead with uh, the Astros have only thirteen games left. Oh no, sorry, the Astros have eleven games left. Five games up with eleven to play, and Seattle has not been playing with any amount of urgency whatsoever. Well, some of these races are decided. But one of the amazing things that happens at this time of year is it gets people watching all over the map and try to figure out, well, who's going to win this game? Who's going to win that game? And if you're a New York Met fan, I know a lot of people are who listen to this podcast, it was worth it to stay up. For most of us that like collecting cards, the idea of spending two grand or more on a Mike Trout rookie card just isn't in the cards, if you will. I love collecting, but that's some serious money to drop. But thanks to Slab Packs from ArenaClub.com, it's now possible to score gem mints for a fraction of the retail price. Every card that I had listed was hit in the last week's Arena Club sub pack drop. Arena Club is the only repack that provides real value, a complete view of all possible cards, and clear hit rates for each one. Arena Club Slab Packs are revolutionizing the repack game with transparency. After your polls are revealed, they'll immediately be placed in your showroom for safekeeping, selling, trading, or auction. The Arena Club grading process is accurate, fast, and transparent, with a full grade rationale provided an explanation of how your card was scored. Whether you're buying, selling, trading, or displaying, Arena Club is the card collecting platform you have to check out. Right now, you can get 10% off your first slab pack or card purchase by going to arenaclub.com slash MLB, locked on MLB, and use code locked on MLB. That's arenaclub.com slash locked on MLB, code locked on MLB for 10% off your first purchase. As I hinted before, if you were a Met fan like my cousin Dave and you stayed up watching all the games or trying to follow all the scores, uh, this was one of those miracle nights for you. First and foremost, the Metropolitans behind McGill uh, absolutely trounced the Nationals. Marte had a great game. Iglesias, OMG, he had a great game. And Acuna, Luis, Luis Anel Acuna, Ronald's brother, they picked him a trade in last year's uh, trade deadline. He went three for four, homered his first major league home run, and drove in two runs. And then you got Alonzo. Pete Alonzo got his 33rd home run, drove drove in five runs to make an 86 run batted in for him. And the polar bear did well. And uh, McGill pitched his six innings. He did not let up an earned run. And the bullpen did their job. And the Mets have an 83-win season. But they had to look around. How would the Braves do? The Braves are still hot on their tail. Well, the Atlanta Braves found themselves in a game against the Cincinnati Reds. And the Braves got out to a three-run lead before the Reds even came to bat. And they were up 5-1 to in the fourth inning. Okay, so this is going to be one of those bad nights for Mets fans wanting to hopefully gain some ground on the Braves. But then Mr. Steer, you know Mr. Steer. You may not know Mr. Steer. It's Spencer Steer. And here's something you may not know about Spencer Steer. He homered, and he's now a 2020 man. I didn't realize that until I saw the highlights. And despite the fact that the Reds pitching was all over the map, do you know what? So was Atlanta's. And despite getting two hits from Marcelo Zuna, the Braves lost that game 6-5. to five which means the Braves are now two games behind the Mets. But the Mets, 
who not too long ago were thinking, I wonder if they'll even make the postseason, they're having their eyes on an even a bigger prize. They want to not be the last wild card team, but maybe be that middle wild card team. That would require the Arizona Diamondbacks to lose, and they're playing the Rockies, who are a 93 loss team. So obviously, the defending National League champions are going to beat the Rockies, right? Think again, it's Coors Field and everything is weird there, except that Mr. Feltner, did you know that uh, Ryan Feltner wound up pitching the seventh inning, only allowing one run in a game in Coors Field? Tovar homered, Goodman homered, and Bud Black became the all-time winningest manager in the history of the Colorado Rockies. Around that time, I got a text from my cousin Dave, who's a diehard Mets fan, who said, I may have to see the end of the Astros-Padres game. And it was late on the East Coast. Well, the Padres were up, and then the Padres were down, but then the Houston Astros took the game 4-3 to three in 10 innings. So now, if you're a New York Met fan, oh boy, you're happy with how things turned out. Because listen to me now. The Mets and the Diamondbacks are now tied for the second wildcard spot. And the Mets are, and Diamondbacks, for that matter, are now only two games back in the loss column of San Diego for the top wildcard position. The Mets probably do not want to face the Milwaukee Brewers. They probably don't want to face the San Diego Padres either. I got news for you. The Padres and the, and the Brewers could very well face in the National League Championship Series. You don't want to face either one of them. But if the Mets want to get in there, and have a little bit of wiggle room, and maybe have a day or two to rest people up. Holding off the Braves at this time is the right thing to do. And the Braves, look, at it's never a good time to lose three in a row. But when you're looking up and the Braves have only 11 games left and are down by two, oh boy, that's a good night for the Mets. All right, and it was a good night for us here, which is going to bring us to today's trivia question. There's no more batting for pitchers in the postseason, which sucks, unless you're Shohei Otani. The last pitcher to hit a home run in the World Series was Joe Blanton of the Philadelphia Phillies. Here's a trivia question. Who led up the home run? What pitcher led up the last pitcher home run in World Series history? Put your answer down here at YouTube or on Twitter or whatever the hell it's called now. Talking about the mess that is the Dodgers pitching staff, the Yankees being on fire, the Orioles falling, the Tigers suddenly not learning how to lose a single game, and things going well for Met fans. This has been Locked on MLB. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.